All right. Well, good morning. If you uh, have your Bibles or if you found the YouVersion app in our event, um, turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. If you don't have a copy of God's Word, uh, we have them in front of you. And if you don't own a copy of God's Word, we want you to take that one home with you. There's a message in there so you know you're not stealing from the church. Uh, we want you to have this. We want you to take that with you. And um, this is our way of saying that we love you. So Romans chapter 12, welcome to Get on the Bus. All right, this is a two-week message series. And last week, um, I introduced this concept to you. And, and here's the thing about getting on the bus. If, if you don't get on the bus, guess what happens? You get left behind. You're at the bus stop, and, you, and you, you're waiting for the next bus to come along. And for some people, that might be years away. You're here right now, and God, is, the Holy Spirit is all over you. And you're thinking about not getting on the bus. And I don't know when the bus is coming back around. But I can, I'm here to tell you, I hear the air brakes being released at Crossroads Church. And this bus is about to take off. And I want everyone that hears this, I want everybody watching online to get on the bus. Not because uh, we want to fill the bus up, but because we want you to be used by God. We want you to see the creator of the world to be real in your life. Well, that was last week. And last week I gave you uh, some next steps that all of us have to take. And the first one is this, you got to get in. To get on the bus, you got to get in first. And what do I mean by that? You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have never called on him to be your Lord and Savior, that is the first step. That is the most important decision you'll ever make. If you don't make that decision, none of the rest of these decisions matter. It doesn't matter where you go to church. It doesn't matter how much you read the Bible. It doesn't matter if you wear your uh, jeans out on your knees praying. If you never establish that relationship with Jesus Christ, all of those other things will be gone when you pass into eternity. Most important decision, get in. You know, the second thing I talked about is to find your purpose. We here at Crossroads believe that everybody was created on purpose and for a purpose. You know, and that's the biggest question everybody wants answered is, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? How is God going to use me? And the third thing I talked about was to invite somebody. All right. You know, the, most churches in America are declining, and that was before COVID. The answer to a growing church is the word invite. If we won't invite our friends, if we won't invite our family, if we won't invite our neighbors, who will? Because here's the reality, that everybody has a thousand reasons why they shouldn't come to church. We just got to give them one on why they should come. And, you know, one of the things that we should do is get excited about our church. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm excited that the, the stage is out farther and I'm closer to you. <laughs> Y'all keep moving back and I'm just going to keep pushing this thing out a little bit further. I've seen some concerts where they put on a harness and the guy can float out there. And so that's coming in 2022. <laughs> if y'all move back too far, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've got the men in here that will help make that happen. <laughs> Trust me. No, invite somebody. We're excited about what God's doing here. We're excited about, you know what I'm excited about? Beyond the cosmetic things that you see, I'm excited about the lives that I watch. Walk in these doors with the deer in the headlight look. And month, a month later, they are a part of everything that we're doing. They brought their family. Well, the fourth step was to choose community. You know, we believe that you don't have to go through life alone. Uh, I'm, I'm anti-quarantine. All right. And what I mean by that, if you're sick, stay away. But being isolated for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks is not healthy. The Bible tells us in from, from Adam and Eve, it's not good for a man to be alone. Women, I don't know about you all, but the Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. All right. You put a man alone and bad things happen. I mean, he starts to go, he goes out to the shop and who knows what he does out there. It's not good. You know what? I don't think it's good for any of us to be alone. And so here at Crossroads, we are determined that we are going to choose community. 
We are going to get together. That's why we had 198 uh, people came through our doors on New Year's Eve. Now, i got to be honest with you, not all 98 stayed. But that was our invitation. Come anytime after 6 and leave when you want. All right? Uh, I wanted to leave a little earlier than I did. But, uh, you know, there were a couple people watching. Every time I disappeared, they'd be like texting me, hey, where are you? You know, what room are you asleep in? <clears throat> but choose community. Why? Because, you know, it, that's what it's all about. That's why we start life groups up next week is we do life together. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then finally, live generously. Folks, this is the time to live generously. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about with our time, with our talent, and with our treasure. And, and you have to answer, how am I going to do that? How am I going to use my time, talent, and treasure living generously for God? Because we all have that ability. Well, that was last week, and so now, um, not only do I want you to get on the bus, but when you get on the bus, I want you to find the right seat. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. And I'm going to show you how through God's word, you can absolutely find the right seat that you're supposed to be in. Because here's what I've uh, discovered. Uh, my dad was in the military, and then I spent 20 years in the military. So 48 years between the two of us moving all over this country, moving all over the globe, actually. And um, I counted it up this morning, and we've been in 22 different churches. That's a lot of church exposure. That's a lot of different ways people do things at church. And I've discovered there's a wrong way to help people get involved in church. And, and here's what it looks like. And, 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 and don't elbow anybody, don't point, and don't text anybody if, if something I say uh, reminds you of something, okay? Because here's usually what happens. You see a need, like there's a need in the nursery. And you're like, you know what, I hate kids, but I'm going to go in there because there's a need in the nursery. <laughs> here's what happens. You'll go in there in three weeks, and one of those kids that have an explosive... Uh, diaper and you'll know that god's not calling you to this church anymore <laughs> and you won't tell anybody that's why but the reality is you weren't in the right seat but you wanted to why is church you know you can't go wrong in church can you yes you can here's what happens if you find the wrong seat you're either going to uh, burn out or you're going to give up and i don't want either one of those things to happen and absolutely, that doesn't have to happen here at Crossroads Church. And so if you found Romans chapter 12 in your Bible, I'm just going to read a couple of verses to you. I'm going to show you the secret how that you can live out your God-given potential in 2021. And I'm going to start and read in verse 3. And Paul says these words, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you. Now, now here's, what, here's what happens. Paul is speaking from experience, I was sharing with uh, Pastor Lee this morning that, that there's, there's two ways that you can learn. You can either learn from your own mistakes or you can learn from other people's mistakes. Now, wh who do y'all want to learn from? Other people, that's right. You know, Thank you for showing me not to do that. Uh, some of you young husbands, you need to be watching these older, wiser husbands. All right, they, they've said no or yes to their wives when they shouldn't have. They answered too slow to the question, you know, does this uh, dress make me look beautiful? I mean, come on, guys, that, 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 like before she gets to beautiful, it's yes. All right, now, if she uses different words. You might have made a mistake, but I've done that before. You'll recover, all right? Um, and so Paul had made this mistake. I think Paul thought too much of himself. You see, Paul was probably the greatest theologian that we've ever encountered when it comes to God's word trained by the highest, lived out a life that is it, it, close to perfect as you can get, but he didn't. And yet that guy ended up killing people in the name of God. And so here's what he says. He says, um, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's a good notion going into 2021. But to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned to them. And here's what I want to tell you. If you have made that first step and you got in, you have asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, the good news is that God has given every one of you a measure of faith. Now, some of it, it's different than the others. It looks different than other people. And I'm going to share with you why there are those differences. And all you're accountable for is how you live out 
your measure of faith. How you live out what God has gifted you. And, and that's really what it is. It's all about the spiritual gifts. Now, I know what some of you may already be thinking. You're like, I knew it. I knew it. He took Baptists off the name and now we're going charismatic. Folks, I, I want you to, let me just tell you something, all right? Number one is I was Baptist born, Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. But before I'm a Baptist, I'm a Bible believer. And I'm going to preach the entire counsel of the Word of God. And what I'm about to share with you today is the entire counsel of the Word of God. I think some Baptists have taken it out of their uh, passages, but today we're going to reinstitute it. I want to share with you why it's important to you. And so in verse 4, it says, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. It's a beautiful picture just three or four weeks ago. This, uh, we had 28 people here all doing different jobs. And a job that could have taken three or six hours took us one hour. Why? Because everybody was operating their function. They were doing their job. They were doing their assignment. I mean, we had a big, strong guys picking up cues and, and driving them through that door. On the other side of that door, we had guys in trucks with trailers that knew how to get them safely to the garage. And then in the garage, we had another team that was stacking and racking them. It's impressive. You should go over there and look at that someday. But it was because everybody was doing their assigned job that 28 people came together and worked as a team. Well, you know, God doesn't want us just to do that when we're moving pews and pulling up carpet. God wants us to do that every day of the week, every Sunday. Continue on in verse 5. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. There he is saying, each of us is a little bit different. Each of us have received the grace a little bit different. Each of us have received that measure of faith just a little bit different. And then he goes through the list and he says, if prophecy, let him prophesy in proportion to our faith. If service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in his generosity, the one who leads with zeal and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And so here are the seven gifts. And if you have called on Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you have one or more of these gifts active in your life. And the question is, are you using it? So what I want to do is I want to just kind of take you through each one of these gifts. And so the first one there is uh, prophecy. And when I talk about the, the word prophecy, um, that scares us here in the Baptist church. But really what it's talking about is it's talking about a prayer warrior. These are the people who, who uh, read God's word. They have a passion for God's word. They believe God's word. And so that comes out in prayer, in believing prayer. All right. And it's interesting that it talks about in proportion to our faith. So those who have that uh, prophetic gift, those who have that, that gift of uh, prayer, um, it comes forth in your ability to pray. It comes forth in your ability to believe that God is going to do something when everyone else has given up. But, you know, on each one of these gifts, not only is there a strength to it, but there's also a shadow side to that gift. And those who are, are gifted in uh, prophecy or gifted as a prayer warrior, uh, sometimes these people aren't the most organized. Sometimes these folks uh, don't see the big picture. It's all about right now, and, and they are charged, charged, charged. And they've got to be careful. Because sometimes they'll, they'll charge beyond their faith. They'll charge in the wrong direction, believing that it is from God. And we've got to be careful on that. And so uh, at, at, after I cover these, I'm going to share with you some teams that we have positioned here at Crossroads. And somebody who has this gifting is probably a great prayer coordinator. They'll be a part of that team and they'll help make sure that people who ask for prayer, I mean, you've seen this on social media where people ask for a prayer request and, and people respond praying or something like that. And, and I wonder sometimes how many of us follow through. Does it, does it last beyond the 10 seconds or is that something that stays with us over the next few days if weeks and months? You know, a, a good friend of ours 
their mom right now is in the ICU in Texas. And I see her posting updates. And all I can imagine is that she spends hours in prayer for her mom. And I see people saying, I'm praying, we're praying with you. But I doubt that anybody's reaching the level of that daughter. And so it, those of you who are gifted in, in prayer, it's easy for you to pray. Matter of fact, you probably spend hours a day in prayer and you don't even think about it. You have embed prayer into when you're working in the kitchen or you're working out in your workshop or you're driving down the road. It's easy for you. Well, the next gift that, that they share is one called service or helps. Those of you who are gifted in helps, you're the person who works behind the scenes and you don't want to be recognized. Matter of fact, if I uh, recognize you publicly, you're embarrassed and you almost think I'm mad at you. <laughs> and that's just not the reality. I believe what uh, in Romans 12 it says to give honor where honor is due. And so that's one of the things I try to do. But those of you in, uh, that are gifted in helps and gifted in service, you just want to get, do the job. You see a need, you take care of it. You don't ask, you just do it. You quickly recognize, I did write your name down by this one, Romy. <laughs> you, you hear him saying amen. Uh, Romy works around this church constantly. He, he does, it's an incredible amount. He doesn't do it to seek recognition. Right now, he's mad at me. Um, but Romy is a, a powerful um, person who's been gifted in the works of helps, gifted in service. And here's what I would tell you is that, that not just Romy, but all of the people who are gifted in helps and gifted in service, they need to be careful because they sometimes struggle with the word no. They, it, it doesn't exist in their vocabulary. You know, if you ask somebody who's gifted in service, they'll say yes and they'll fill up their calendar. They've got 28 hours in a day. And they'll fill all 28 hours up. And then it'll start affecting other areas of their lives. And so... Um, not only can they not say no, but they have a hard time sharing the work. They have a hard time letting other people work alongside them. And it's not because they don't like people. It's not because they don't want, they think they, that they can do it better. It's just, that's just their way of doing it. So um, we have the, the gift of prophecy, of prayer. We have the gift of helps or service. And then there's the gift of teaching. Uh, when it comes to teaching, these are the men and women who love God's word. They love to study God's word. They love to pull out these, I mean, things that you never believe were in, God, in the Bible. And then they love to tell you about that. But the, the shadow side, the downside to that is these same people, because they love it and they, they, they love everything about it from themselves, they forget about others and they share, 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 share. And sometimes they can share to where it bores you to tears. A again, this isn't, they're, they're not trying to bore you. They just love everything about God's word. They just love finding those little gold nuggets. They just love polishing off those little rubies and gems that are in scripture. And sometimes you're not catching up to them and, and it's hard. These are the people that we need on each team that, that serve as trainers. That, you know, one of the things that I recognized when um, I first got here. And, and one of the things that we struggle as a church to do properly is when we get a volunteer is to train them. You know, it's so easy to give them the opportunity and walk away and then they're doing it because, you know, they, all right, I, I'm going to stand here and act like I know what I'm doing. And what happens is we don't train them. And, and, and if we find our teachers, they'll train them. They'll tell them, you know what, this is the, the way that you do it. And, and this is what should be done. And when you're finished, this is what it should look like. People who volunteer, they love getting that information. Otherwise, they're, they're walking away when it's all said and done, and they're wondering, did I do it right? But when we have our trainers in the right place and they're engaged with all of our volunteers, all of a sudden we see people walking away fulfilled in the jobs that, that God has called them to. There's a, another gifting. It's called encouragement. In the Bible here that uh, I read from, it said exhort. But these are the people who are eager to come along somebody who's hurting, somebody who's in having difficult times. You know, these are the people who have the, the ability to empathize, to, to be with you in that hard, difficult area. These are the ones who, when you lose a loved one, they, they can come alongside of you, and, and they don't even have to say anything, and they're a blessing to you. But remember, I told you all of these gifts have a shadow side or have a time where they get out of balance. And, 
And one of the times the way that this get, gets out of balance and can, you know, sometimes uh, see it, set us the wrong way if this isn't our gifting is that they see trials as opportunity. And, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear that. You know, th these are the people who come alongside you when you lose your job and they say, you know what, God is working through this. And you're like, you know what, I just wish he'd work a different way. And we struggle, and, and sometimes we don't understand where their hope comes from. But see, they're gifted in hope. They're gifted in the ability to see what's on the other side. They're gifted in the ability to encourage. And, and if we're not careful, we'll be offended because they are seeing um, God working where we feel like the wheels of life have just uh, abandoned us. Well, another area that uh, we are all gifted or some of us are gifted in is in giving. You know, um, the person who is gifted in giving likes to give and they like to give the best. You know, you'll hear them quote the, that verse that, that David used and that when it comes to the house of God, I'm not going to do anything less than the best. And when it comes to what God is uh, doing through those who have that gift of, of giving, um, I, I'm here to tell you they don't do it for the publicity. Matter of fact, I, I saw earlier this, uh, matter of fact, yesterday, I think it was, or day before yesterday, but uh, Josh Cross, he was up here earlier. Josh has been, has a spiritual gift of giving. Josh gives of his time. He was here six hours yesterday, he, and his wife was on the other side. Uh, she volunteers as our Kids Quest director. Um, he gives of his talent. Um, he has a lot of skill sets, and we have utilized them. He has found a place to uh, be used by God. And then when the uh, stimulus checks started dropping, uh, he put a post out there, and he said, you know what? He says, I'm going to tithe my uh, stimulus check, and I challenge everyone else to do the same thing. You know, and, and so a couple of us uh, responded, and um, I would be, not be surprised to hear that some people were offended by that. And here's why. They're not gifted in giving. You know, they struggle writing a check out. They struggle. They're like, hey, I got a lot more needs than the church does. And they miss the whole point that the Bible leads us in, in this opportunity to give. Those of you who are, are, uh, have the spiritual gift of giving, you know, you don't even think twice. Matter of fact, if you don't give, you have a hard time. You're like, oh, you know, there's got to be another way that I can do this. And you find out that when it comes to your time, your talent, and your treasure, it is an open chest that you hold before God. Another gift or spiritual gift is leadership. Now, leadership is, uh, you know, you're going to find the people who are, have the ability to motivate you. Um, the, the leaders are the ones who have the ability to tell you uh, about taking a trip to hell and you think you're going to enjoy the trip on the way because they, somehow they just bring out the best and, and make it sound like it's going to be exciting. Um, they are the ones who are organizing things or um, the, you'll find them delegating because here's what leaders discover very early is that um, if you let other people do a job, they'll do it. But leaders also know that if you don't let them, they won't. And so one of the things that uh, I think that I have been gifted in is leadership, and, and I look for opportunities to give other people a chance to lead. You know, uh, I am not a, uh, I, I learned this the hard way in the military, and that was you've got to let your people fail. Because if you scoop in and, and uh, rescue them before they fail, sometimes that scraped up knee will teach them. All right, I got a scraped up knee one time. I was uh, getting ready for one of my Air Force fitness tests, and I was waking up uh, early in the morning, and I was out running, and this one street was pitch black. There were no street lights on. And then this car was driving towards me with his lights on high beam. And I, as it got a little closer, I stepped off the street. I mean, it was a big road. I was kind of curious why they wanted to stay in that lane. But I stepped off the street, and when I did, it was, there was a hole. I stumbled. I've got a scar on my knee today from this seven years ago. But you know what? I never went running on that street at that time of day again. We, we learn, you know, if we don't fall, if, we don't, if I wouldn't have stumbled like that, I probably would have tried it again the next day instead of waiting until what smart people do and when the light's out. <clears throat> but here's a downside for those of us gifted with leadership is that sometimes we expect others to perform at that same level. We expect others to take projects on and not stop until it's finished. And, and you know, if, if somebody's not gifted in that area, um, they're, they're going to stop when the, the clock tells them to. They're going to stop when they run out of supplies. They're going to stop when 
um, it's convenient. And sometimes that's before the job gets done. And the last gift is the gift of mercy. The gift of mercy is this person is always caring. This person is always finding people. They can sense when you're experiencing grief or pain and they come alongside of you. These are those who um, have what we call social intelligence. They're discerning. They know when somebody's having a good day or a bad day. If you're in a group setting and somebody's having a bad day, they'll protect them from being picked on or um, being pulled into things that they're not ready for or, or have the energy nor the inclination to do. But here's the downside to those who are gifted in mercy because those gifted in mercy, everybody wants to be around them. They just have an ability to make you feel better. But here's the downside is they're not a motivator. They're not an organizer. They're not everything that's the opposite of the leader. But they'll always be there with you. They'll always be there for you. And in our teams, uh, we like to have those of you who are gifted in mercy to be assigned as the role of recruiter. Why? Because people like to be around you. And they'll want to be on your team. And so, um, so these are the different spiritual gifts that we have. But it goes beyond just gifting. All right, so there, there they are. There's seven of them. You, if you have uh, called Jesus your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit resides in you, uh, you have one or more of these giftings in your life. Now, the next part of trying to find out uh, God's, the, your God-given potential is to find out what are you passionate about. And here's what I'm excited about here at Crossroads is a uh, Crossroads Church is the right vehicle for you in 2021. If you want to live out your God-given potential, uh, we're doing things. We are moving forward. We are ready to uh, do everything that we possibly can to get the gospel into our community. And so uh, how do we do that? Well, we do that by different teams. And so based on these different teams um, and based on your passion level when it comes to these different teams, uh, we want uh, you to get plugged in. And so the first uh, team that I want to talk about is the outreach team. You know, the outreach team is, this is uh, one of our most effective teams right now. And here's where the outreach team is uh, for, for a place to get plugged in. Uh, big events. I don't know if you know this, but the last two years, we scheduled three big events every year. We had Easter. We had a, uh, it was something going on in the summer, and now it's a patriotic service. And then in the fall, we had Friend Day. Well, this year, we're kind of expanding that a little bit um, because we are adding on an open house at the end of this month, and then we're going to add our candlelight service and make that a big um, event for us. These, the, the theme for the outreach team is we go to where the people are, and then we end up bringing them back this way. Because then you think about our uh, local missions team, which is a part of our outreach team. Local missions, uh, we started two years ago a, a ministry called Every Dollar. And we set a dollar aside for everybody that's sitting here uh, on each Sunday. And then we have a benevolence team that meets each month. And if you go to our website, crossroadschurch.faith slash um, every dollar, there is a form and you can uh, submit your neighbors. You can submit a friend or a relative that's in a bind. Tell the story there. And then when our team gets that, we'll review it. And then based on what we have set aside, we utilize that and we invest that back in to the families. It's been incredible what we've been able to do through this. Um, we, w one of the things that I have realized is that it's not about us having a ministry with the crossroads stamp on it, and more about us leveraging ministries that are already in our local community and coming alongside them and helping them. So, for example, our uh, local food pantry, the CCBA food pantry, uh, we could have a food pantry here, but it would be nowhere near the level that they have over at CCBA. And, and what we can do is, so Carrie and I and um, Gary were over there and uh, unloading trucks each week. I don't know, once or twice a week, they'll get trucks in. And it's amazing the deals and the ability that they have to take this and then give that out to those who are in need in our community. You know, another thing that we uh, uh, tied in with the Salvation Army. Just a month ago, you saw that we had these big barrels, Salvation Army barrels, fill two of those up. And, and helped our matter of fact, the, the lady who runs it, Patty Melton, is a member here at Crossroads Church. Keep going down that list, and you'll see a, a thing, a program called Home to School. Incredible program. These are uh, people who are plugged in, and, and they find the youth that are missing school, and then they get into the home. Because sometimes what's going on at home has to do with why they're not in school. 
And so we partnered with them, and we've been able to go into homes and renovate kitchens. We've been going into homes, providing beds, which led us to the next ministry, which was the Sleep in Heavenly Peace ministry. And um, we, the year before, we, I think, put out 14 beds over a six-month period. Um, just in the last three months, when we had a bed build out here, uh, we saw 20 beds go into needy homes. Good stuff. Um, another ministry that we came alongside is the pregnancy care clinic. You know, you drive by it all the time when you drive through town. Don't even realize it. But here is a ministry that's reaching out to young women who are, are in a time, a scary time for them. Because of that, we were introduced to this uh, Embrace Grace ministry. And you saw us do this last year where we took a, a group of young ladies who uh, were faced with an un, uh, unexpected pregnancy and took them through a 12-week Bible study. And then at the end, the church just poured out love on them and had um, baby showers for them. They weren't getting any of this stuff. No one else was telling them, I love you, through this. Everyone else was telling them what's going to go wrong or why you shouldn't have it or, you know, all the problems that are going to result because now you've got this baby and you're too young. And because of that Embrace Grace ministry, we are now um, taking uh, the, a church uh, New Harmony Baptist Church that uh, is just up the road, closed their doors this year. And we reached out to the Baptist Foundation who took uh, possession of that building. And we said, we, we want to start a ministry in that building. And what's really good is that church is uh, ultimately responsible because they started eternity and eternity started this church here. And now here we are coming back around, going into that same building where many of you grew up and ran around. Some of them married in it and going into that same building and ministering to young men and women who are hurting. Who, who the, the Bible tells in Isaiah, that is our mission. We're part of a, a group called Rise Up that are actively looking for ways how here in the greater Centralia area, we can have an active part in helping those who are exploited uh, through human trafficking. And then what I'm really excited about, something that we've just um, really gotten some traction on is our open gym. You know, two months ago, uh, we had a couple of kids call and say, hey, can we use the gym on a Sunday afternoon? And that grew into last week, we saw 40 kids um, on one night just playing basketball. And that has now grown into where Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays are going to be set aside in the evening for them to be able to go in there and play and use that incredible basketball court. Not only that, you may not know this, but for the last uh, couple of weeks in the afternoon, we've had walkers come in and use that gym and because everything's closed. And then something that we've just added going into 2021 is uh, we've added some uh, fitness equipment in there where that if you want to get a workout in, there's the ability to do this. And so if you watch our uh, Facebook page, if you watch our website, you'll see us post a calendar of when the building is available to come into and utilize these. And, and here's, here's what we're convinced of. That, that we want to leverage that gym to reach our community. Because ultimately, everything that we do is going to bring people closer to the gospel. And for two years, we haven't understood how to, to take that gym and capitalize on it. But because of COVID, it's been a blessing. The reason, for, because of COVID, we have these video cameras and we have a, a video ministry going, one that we wouldn't have done this early. Because of COVID, we have an open gym and we are going to reach hundreds, if not thousands, in 2021 as a result of that. Well, that's just our outreach team. The next team that I want to tell you about is our WOW team. This is our first impressions team. These were the people who made you feel welcome as you walked in. There might have been people in the parking lot saying good morning. They're holding doors open for you. There might have been people in the foyer waving at you. There may have been, did you see the coffee and the donuts out there? I know this is a church, but it didn't happen miraculously. You know, somebody went and picked that up. Somebody turned on the coffee and made that and put that out there for us. That was our hospitality team. This is a great opportunity. Not, not only do we have the, the wow team, the first impression team, but the next team is the engagement team. This is those who, um, they engage newcomers into the life of the church. I love it that you're here. I love it that you're sitting out here, but I think that there's more to what God has in store for you. And we want to be that vehicle that allows you to do the more. Uh, in our guest engagement team, these are things that aren't operating at the moment, but these will, you'll start seeing this, but our pastor's breakfast, foundations class, care ministry, and our prayer list, all of that falls under that engagement team. 
Moving on, there's another team out there called the shock and all team. You know, this is the team, when you come here next week, uh, this background is going to look totally different than it looks today. Um, and when you see that, that, that's that team making it happen. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, did you, we had these uh, Christmas trees up here. Uh, that was the shock and all team that decorated for Christmas for us. Um, then we have our worship team. Worship team are those who help draw us close to Jesus Christ. You know, isn't it so much easier? Uh, I mean, did you all enjoy singing I Surrender All? Helping us prepare our hearts. Let me ask you, while you were singing I Surrender All, were you worried about some of the, the, the problems that, that you left in the parking lot? No. You were thinking about what problems God can solve by just saying, lifting up your hands and surrendering. Not only do we have the worship team, but then we have our life groups team. You know, this is where, if, if there's nothing else, I would tell you, uh, we're going to start next week. We're going to do a three-week series. I'm going to preach a, a message series called People Problems. All right? Everybody's got them. Okay? If you've got a wife, a husband, if you've got children, if you've got a brother or sister, mom or dad, you've got people problems. Okay? If you've got a job, you work with people problems. And what I want to do is I want to show you in Scripture how to handle that and, and how to process that. Um, three weeks. That's the time for you to get plugged into a life group. Next week, you'll see in the um, hot sheet a list of locations and times and days for that, the opportunity. And if none of those work for you, you will find out that we have a sheet available that all you have to do is access our website, and you can download it, print it up, or just pull it up on your phone, and over dinner, you can do it with your family. You know, you know how we used to have dinner together as families? It, And then the last team is our next generation team. You know, one of the things I'm most excited about here at Crossroads Church is the next generation. When I got here for the first six months, we averaged six children in this church. I'm confident today there's 30 kids running around. How does that, what does that look like? Well, we have a nursery over here from birth to two years of age. Then across the hallway, we have our pre-K, which has three and four-year-olds. And then on the other side, it goes up from uh, five years old through sixth grade. And then um, outside of Sunday, we have opportunities through called Radiate, and where we have a junior high and a senior high ministry. You know, we had all of these, and we're ready to serve, and our church is ready to make this happen. But, you know, sometimes we're waiting for the, the kids to come along, the families to come along, and then the champions that God has gifted in those areas to come along and to serve. So how do we live up to our God-given potential? Well, I've told you about the spiritual gifting, and if you are a follower of Christ, you've got a gift. You may have multiple gifts. If you, are, uh, if you heard me go through those teams, uh, probably one of those interests you, maybe even uh, speaks to a passion that you may have. In worship, it might have been singing or playing an instrument. Uh, in the children's ministry, it might be children themselves. Uh, when it comes to, uh, maybe it's just greeting, and you want people to feel welcome about this church. I don't know where, which one, you're passionate about, but if you would take your gifting and you combine it with your passion and then you do a little work and then you see that it provides value to somebody. This is what we call the sweet spot. And this is where I believe you'll find your God-given potential. You'll find what you were called to do. Some of you are teachers and, and you have an ability to take the, the hidden precepts and expose them to people and, and turn the light on for them to see this. Others are leaders who have the ability to inspire a group to accomplish more than anyone thought that was possible. 